Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm back with another weekly recap. We had quite a few interesting stories this week. Uh, first up, we had a pretty big bug coming to the game today, which I'm going to talk about right away because it will affect pure accounts. It's RuneScape's 6th anniversary. We received a new RuneLight update as well as we have a few interesting community stories and more. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. Okay, so normally I like to start with the content updates, but this week I'm going to start with the pretty massive bug that came to the game with the 6th birthday in QOL update. Now what was supposed to be a very simple quality of life update turned into a pretty substantial bug that affects mainly pure accounts or any account that doesn't want to get more than one defense. Now what happened is when the update went live and people logged into their account, uh, they noticed that their attack style had been reset and not only that with certain magical staves the attack styles were wrong so if you used an attack style that normally would give attack experience it gave defense experience if you used one that normally gave defense experience it gave strength experience and anyway it was just all pretty much messed up now as far as i'm aware they have fixed that but i would recommend testing this on your main account first and unfortunately the update wiped any memory of the attack style you were previously using which is ironic because that is the whole point of the update so i repeat when you log into your account double check the attack style that you are using before you continue training because it will not have remembered uh the last style that you were using now it seems like jagex is trying to fix this on a case-by-case -case basis so if your account was affected by this bug you can go and leave a comment in a forum and they will attempt to fix it for you most likely your account will have to have gained experience in the last few hours they'll be tracking it some way to prevent people from going on with every scuffed pure account and trying to fix it right now however there is a hope to fix your account if you have been affected by it so this week we received a one content update it was called the sixth birthday in the quality of life whatever that title is so essentially with this update we got the release of the sixth birthday event it's a very small mini quest or event you might call it that will give you a two-handed cake as a reward i will leave a link in the description for a very quick guide posted on reddit we also of course saw the infamous release of the auto casting and attack style quality of life i guess you would call it so the intent of the update was as follows magical weapons which share the same spell selections will now remember previous chosen spell selections for auto casting this means that you can switch between your various weapons knowing that the same spell will be ready when you switch back to your staff or wand. So pretty much if you were using Fire Blast and you needed to switch to a melee weapon, when you equipped your staff again you would not need to go to the spell select option and select another spell. On top of this, weapons that share a category, daggers, swords, bows, etc. will now remember the combat style that was used. For example, if you have a rune sword and you select the aggressive option and then you switch to a bow, and then back it'll remember the option that you had for the sword and the bow independently and the last important part of this update is the auto enchanting jewelry quality of life update before this update you needed to click on each sapphire ring or each emerald ring individually and enchant them one by one it was a point and click process however now if you just use it on one ring it'll continue along uh, until it enchants every single ring in your inventory this will offer a slower experience rate over manually casting it but it's going to be way more afk so I think uh, whenever I enchant jewelry, I will definitely do it this way. We had a few minor quality of life changes like the magic skill guide now has relevant icons beside it as opposed to just the ice barrage icon, I believe. And actually something notable from my Slayer Only Ironman account is fossil and ancient wyverns and now drop volcanic ash so I can get that on my account. Woohoo! And that's pretty much it for content updates this week. So today or tomorrow, we're going to get a new poll that will be live. There are quite a few interesting questions on here. Now, one of the major ones is the quest panel redesign, which was initially proposed by Gentle tractor you can see the design on screen it kind of incorporates the four different panels as well panels instead of just having a kind of drop down menu or clicking on it a bunch which wasn't my favorite design a couple big ones for the grand exchange is uh should the number of trades you were able to see in the grand exchange be doubled from 20 to 40 yes uh please uh, i can't tell people to vote for anything but there is a question that you should read. Also another interesting one for flipping is should Mystic Robe sets be created for the Grand Exchange? This would allow players to easily buy and sell entire sets of Mystic Robes. They would be separated by color. And we're also going to be pulling the new Sandstone method, Drew and his machine. So to the west of the quarry, a new NPC, Drew will be added alongside the grinding machine. You can hand Drew noted buckets that he will hold for safekeeping. You'll then be able to mine the Sandstone deposit next to the machine. And you'll now pay 50 GP and a bucket to get a bucket of sand. I think it's an interesting new method. 50 GP is definitely more reasonable. And there's quite a few other questions on there. So go have a look. The poll should be live today or tomorrow. 
One last piece of content that we received this week was a dev blog for a new Crack the Clue as well as a Treasure Trail expansion. Crack the Clue 2 is, well, pretty self-explanatory. It's going to be very similar to the first one, a very challenging riddle or a treasure hunt essentially, and people will be working on this for way too long. So hopefully we'll come back in a year and it will be solved. Now the more relevant part of this dev blog is the Treasure Trail expansion. They're looking for player designed content to begin with there, so that's kind of cool. And they also mentioned a new tier of clue scroll, which would be beginner clue scrolls uh, for free to play, which I think is generally a good idea because clue hunting is one of the best parts of a membership. I think it would be cool to give a basic version of that to free to play. One other thing they're looking at here is the ability to reroll clue steps. Now the way this would work is after completing a certain amount of clue scrolls, so if you complete 10 easy clue scrolls, for example, you'd get one reroll on a clue step. I don't think this is the worst way to incorporate it, but I don't know about this. I suppose if they kept it to a very low amount, uh, so maybe 10 to 20 clue scrolls to get one skip, it wouldn't be so bad. But I kind of like having clue scrolls that go above your requirements because it kind of gives you sometimes motivation to go train that skill or whatnot. And if you could skip it too much, I think that may take away from that a bit. On top of that, they're also mentioning that stackable clue scrolls and reward caskets. We would like to offer the ability to have more than one clue scroll of the same type in either their inventory or their bank. You would still only be able to complete one clue of each tier at a time, and they'd like to also offer stackable caskets. So I think Karem, that YouTuber, is going to be crying right now, but probably a decent change. <laughs> now, also, they'd like to expand existing tiers with new items, stuff like Blessed Dehyde Shields. That's kind of interesting. Rune's Cape, whatever that is, a Gilded Battle Axe, a uh, Sandwich Lady Outfit, Gilded Dragonhide Set, Dragon Hunter Crossbow Recolors, among quite a few others. And the very last thing here is actually kind of interesting, is a clue scroll boss. It would be called a Mimic, and during the Elite and Master clue scrolls, you'd have a chance of getting Mimic as a task, or as a step, and you would have to kill him. I would hope that would be in the last step, but yeah, that sounds pretty cool actually, a boss fight in a clue scroll. I wasn't planning on covering this in this video, but they just dropped it in the morning when I was finishing up, so I thought I'd throw it in here. Some interesting ideas here. I really like clue scrolls, so I think most people would be happy with expanding them even further. This week, we also saw the release of a new runelight update, 1.5.13. We have changes to the item charge plugin. It now is an option to display info boxes for equipped charged items. We also received the chat history plugin. Now you can cycle through private message senders by hitting the tab key. You can easily keep chatting with all of your friends without having to retype in someone's name or right click on them. This is very good because the actual interface for normally chatting with different friends is somewhat difficult. The agility plugin will now highlight shortcuts orange if you do not have the agility level requirement to cross them. So a nice easy visual indicator and also about five or six different small quality of life changes for rune light. Good work guys, thank you once again. So during the Q&A, Mod West actually showed off a bit of his new design for the Hasidious House rework and it looks very cool. Now as part of the Q&A, they said they were hoping to get it released into game mid to late March, so only about a month away. It does look slightly different from the original design, but some of the buildings look really cool. During the Q&A stream, uh, they take about 20 minutes to show off his design and it looks like he worked really hard on it. Some of the areas look really, really cool, like this giant one with, with all these like dragon fruit looking plants and giant vines going everywhere. Other elements from other houses are kind of minorly integrated in and it's just generally going to look quite a lot better. Now on Reddit this week, two individual people posted some uh, ideas for different plugins that RuneLight might add in the future. A user by the name of SuperCookies edited the item price plugin in RuneLight to show if high alchemy was profitable, so this would be a really good feature for the next version of RuneLight and I hope they add it in. Another user by the name of Rylus1234 is working on another RuneLight plugin, an inventory setup plugin, and it looks pretty cool. You actually be able to quickly remember different inventory setups in the sidebar. It wouldn't actually be on your screen at all. It would be kind of like a, just a quickly saved build at the side and you'd be able to reference it when you are bossing or when you are doing clue scrolls or anything like that. So it actually looks pretty cool. And lastly, I'm going to do a very quick summary of the Q&A or in any of the actual interesting questions on there. Mostly they're introducing a new team member by the name of Mod Acorn and looking over the Hosidia's house rework. The few other questions they have on here is whether the XP rates for the new skilling boss and they said extremely low, like 1k per hour. Mainly what you're doing it for is the rewards, not the experience. Someone asked about distractions and diversions, so that's kind of like the penguin from RS2 or RS3. Everyone said no, nobody wanted it. For those who don't know, or well, probably everyone knows about it now because it was in the settled video, uh, the beekeeper random is disabled on a mobile. Can we get it disabled on desktop as well? They said maybe, or maybe we could just add in a new uh, female beekeeping outfit for it. I'm not sure if that's exactly why they wanted it removed, but whatever. And last superior, fletching in free to play. Uh, kind of some mixed reviews on that one. 
It would be kind of weird making a skill that's always been pay to play and all of a sudden making it free to play. 68% voted yes on this draw poll, it's actually quite a bit, and 32% said no. I'm all for adding new content to free to play and maybe fletching, why not? Someone in the chat said give him agility. Anyway guys, that is it for the weekly recap. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like. I always appreciate it, and I will see you next time.